and this is where we are, we're looking at this passage. So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to the servant girl who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You also are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and the officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter was with them, standing and warming himself, was also with them. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world and I have always taught in the synagogue, synagogues and the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I have said to them. They know what I said. And when he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, if what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But if what I said is right, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. So they said to him, you also are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, the relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, did I not see you in the garden with him? And Peter again denied it. And at once a rooster crowed. Amen. Well, may God bless the reading of his holy word to us this morning. Richard. Okay. <coughs> well, we're looking at this passage uh, of scripture. And we're looking at Peter in particular. Peter in this situation. Where Peter finds himself under pressure. Under pressure. And it's something that as Christians, something that we will all find ourselves in situations we will find ourselves in are pressure situations. And it will have its consequences upon us. And it will have consequences upon others and those around us. Under pressure. How do you respond under pressure? How we respond is like a stone thrown into a pond, a milk pond. As the stone is thrown in, there's a splash and the ripples go out. And it affects, it has a knock-on effect. And so it is uh, with ourselves when we find ourselves under pressure situations. That often we can find ourselves just like Peter here in this situation. Peter, a lover of Jesus, a follower of Jesus. And yet here... By his very words and his actions, he denies his Lord three times. Something which Jesus earlier had told him, that this is what's going to happen to you, Peter. That you are going to deny me. You see, Peter had to learn that Jesus had to lay down his life for him. Before he would lay down his life for Jesus. Because Peter, remember, Peter said, Lord, I laid down my life for you. Will you really, Peter, lay down your life for me? Will you really sacrifice everything for me, Peter, if you are my disciple? And actually we see that Peter's not ready. Peter's not actually ready to sacrifice everything. Because here we see Peter denying his Lord under pressure. It tells us that Peter's not alone. He follows the arresting party, doesn't he, from the garden through, through the night. He, he follows the party along with another disciple. John's Gospel tells us that he was with another disciple. They bound him, they led him to Annas, verse 13. And then verse 14, it was Caiaphas who advised the people that Jesus was expedient. Simon Peter, verse 15 it is, Simon Peter followed Jesus and so did another disciple. 
Well, this other disciple is John himself. It's the pen writer. Uh, we know it is because here it tells us that actually, the, the high priest actually knew John, it tells us, doesn't it? So the disciple was known to the high priest. And it tells us, John tells us here in verse, um, down at the bottom, verse 26, one of the servants of the high priest. So it's inferring that John knows who the servant is of the high priest, you see. One of the servants of the high priest. A relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off. Now this denial of Peter and the arrest of Jesus is given in the four gospel accounts. And, in, in, and they're slightly different in, in different accounts, coming from different viewpoints. But we'll be looking at, at this one here in John's gospel. We see that John, the disciple that Jesus loved, had entered into the courtyard. He'd gone through into the courtyard with the arresting party. He, as it were, had access. He went through. But as somehow it tells us, we see that Peter actually stood back. That Peter maybe was even denied access from going in. I doubt that. But I would sooner think that here, Peter actually stood back from the courtyard. From the door, from the entrance. And maybe as John walked in, he looked back and thought, where's Peter? Where's Peter gone? So, because John actually goes back to the court, to the gate. And he sees the slave woman and then no doubt calls Peter over. And I think the pressure of what the circumstances, the situation of all that is happening, Peter is full of fears, he's full of anxiety, he's full of doubt. About what's taking place. I mean after all he wanted to take it all by force. He chops out the bow because he's here. He was ready to get in there. And like all the messiahs before. Fight an earthly battle. All the people who claim to be messiahs. But Jesus was to be a suffering servant. And was to go into this into this situation and, and Peter just could not comprehend it at this point. What is going on? What is happening in my life, Jesus, at this point? I think Peter is that fight or flight principle for Peter. He's already tried the, the fight principle and now he's toying whether it's the flight principle. I'm getting out of here. I'm, st I'm not stepping into the courtyard. There are those who start the Christian life. And they find out that it brings with it a lot of pressure. Because the outside world doesn't conform to what Jesus stands for. And so they stand at a distance and aloof from Jesus. And the moment trouble or hardship comes... They're not prepared to take up their own cross for Jesus. We must be careful of the, the corruption of our own hearts. The depravity of our nature. Yes, we are forgiven by Jesus. And Jesus is our saviour. But the corruption of the heart is still there. The depravity of our nature... To fall into our old ways. To, to, to allow anxiety. To allow depression. To allow distress. To allow sin to entangle us. And stop us from knowing Jesus. And being with him in those times. Prevent us. And so we, we become to draw away from Jesus. We stand at a distance and we watch. Yes, we want to have life in all its fullness, as Jesus promised, but we don't want to take up our cross. And taking up a cross means suffering. Taking up a cross means denial. Denial of everything in the world. Denial of what the world says is right. And to go our way, but to go the way that Jesus went. And the way that Jesus went is the way of the cross. Yes, we want to know the power of the resurrection. But we're not prepared to share in his sufferings. Yes we want to know Jesus as our saviour. We want our sins forgiven. 
But do we want to know Jesus as our Lord of our life and our Master, in whom we bow and submit and surrender everything of this earth and all that there is? And so we keep our distance. We keep our distance from Jesus because it's just too hard a line. The cross is just too heavy. I just want to keep the status quo. I never expect all the hardship and sacrifice to come before me. So we succumb. And so we end up being people filled with fear, people filled with anxiety, people filled with a paralysis and depression because we're not submitting everything to Jesus. We're at a distance. And Peter is paralysed. Outside this courtyard. It doesn't say that. I'm just inferring this. It just says that Peter stood outside the door. Why didn't he go in? John went in. He was with the arresting party. It was too much. It was too radical. Are we distant from the Lord? Are we stepping into the courtyard? Peter was in a dark place. Peter was in a dark place. And Jesus was in a dark place. But Jesus was in the courtyard. He was going to go before the high priest. And I'll tell you something. Just because we're Christian doesn't mean that we don't go into dark places. We do go into dark places. But when we're in those dark places... Don't be distant from Jesus. Come to him because he's there with us in that dark place. He's the one who can lift us out of that dark place. When we identify ourselves with him. Peter wasn't prepared to identify himself. So under pressure Peter is at a distance. But under pressure, pressure he also denies his, his own discipleship doesn't he? Verse 17. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, you also not one of this man's disciples, are you? So, get this, she knew that John was. Do you see that? You also, inferring John's right there next to her, you also are not one of these man's disciples, are you? This is, she's saying this in a cynical way. It's disdainful. Oh, you're not a Christian too, are you? <laughs> Following Jesus? Oh, it's a load of rubbish. It's that sort of way he's speaking. She's cynical to him. It's hostile. Have you noticed that? People are hostile towards Jesus when you say that you're a Christian or that you become a Christian. Have you, have you experienced the cynical voices around? There's lights everywhere. But this is the test, disciple. How do we respond? Under pressure. This is, serves as a warning for us. Peter serves, we're all like Peter. Peter loved Jesus. It's possible that we can find ourselves in an under pressure situation, whether friendly, family, loved ones, or foe, enemy. Strangers, neighbours, you know, at the Christmas party, your family gets together. And they're all acting in a certain way and behaving in a certain way. But you as a Christian, you feel, no, I don't want to, I don't want to behave like that. And as a result, they're cynical. And as a result, you're not a, you're not a Christian. It can happen like that. But what did, what did Peter say? I'm not, I'm not a disciple. So what do we do? We just become like them. And when we do that, we deny our Lord Jesus. And we just become like them. And it grieves the Lord Jesus. It doesn't tell us in this later. It doesn't tell us in the courtyard later on that in another gospel where Jesus caught the eye of Peter. As the, on the third time as the cock crowed. And he denied him. 
we must be careful it, it, that we don't deny our Lord, whether that is in word or action. It, it, it's no coincidence that in 1 Peter 3.15, Peter says this, But in your hearts, honour Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defence to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it in gentleness and with respect. He does he fail to do that? Before and after. We all do it. We have to stop it. We have to stop it. We can't keep doing it. Because there will be no forgiveness left. <coughs> Jesus said this, and we must take his words very seriously in Matthew 10, 33. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. And Jesus is sharing this verse. It's in the context of being in an under pressure situation. When people are saying all types of things against you because of me. It's, he's speaking about standing up to those who oppose you. And saying well, because of your faith in the Lord Jesus. We must confess him with our mouths as Lord. Even before those who speak disdainfully and cynical. Don't succumb. To <coughs> what, secondly, what's awful here is that his denial is not only before this servant girl at the gate, but it's before his own brother in the Lord. It's right in front of John. John must have been scratching his head thinking, what's going on here? This doesn't sort of tally, it doesn't match up. What his life is, what he's saying is not consistent with what he, what he professes. And yet, he's denying that he doesn't... But what is lovely here about John is that he doesn't shut the door in his face, does he? He doesn't say, oh, forget it. He tells the servant girl, no, he's with me. Puts his arm round Peter and takes him into the courtyard. Despite Peter's denial, John still brings him into the courtyard. She knows who he is. He, she knows. You also are not one of his disciples. And that's important. That we need to always draw alongside others. Who are struggling. With denying the Lord. <coughs> or in the situation that they find. We must, we must seek to help them. He doesn't turn his back on them. He calls himself a Christian. You've had it, you've wasted. No, he says, come on. Come on, Peter. I don't know whether at this point in time Peter was, he knew that, you know, the Lord had told him, I bet that had gone right out of his head. And here we see the sovereignty of God, his foreknowledge, things working out, taking place. But John takes him in, into the courtyard. He identifies himself as the Lord's disciple. And he embraces uh, Peter. He brings him in. And then the second denial we see in verses 25 to 27. And it's interesting that the second denial is interdispersed with Jesus before Annas, before the high priest. Because here we have Jesus speaking the truth and commenting and not denying himself. And it's in between, the, it's contrasting the, the, not the, the, the truth of Jesus... And who's speaking the truth against his accusers and the denial of Peter against his accusers, denying that he's even a follower of the Lord. And so here we have it, and it takes place in, front of the, in the courtyard, in front of a charcoal fire. It's the early hours of the morning. It's, in fact, it's probably about 4, 4 a.m. in the morning, something like that. It's still dark. Their day started from sunset to sunrise, 6 a.m., uh, to, to uh, 6 till 6 I think 6 a.m. the more new day would start and here they are because it tells us that the cock crows the rooster crowed just at dawn and we can see that if we read on in our Bibles from John chapter 18 uh, verse uh, 
verse 25. Now Simon Peter was standing and wore his... Oh no. Then, verse 28, sorry. Then they led Jesus from the house of Christ to the government's headquarters. It was early morning. It was early morning. It was just, just gone six. But this is through the night. It's night time. It's cold. It's freezing. The temperature drops. And so they're warming themselves by, by this fire. And again, another t opportunity for Peter to, to own his Lord. To defend his cause. And here is a, a second question. It's just a man sitting around the fire. One of the arresting party. One of the servants. or One of the official guards. It's either a servant or an officer. Verse 18. For they are the ones that made the fire. But John makes it clear the question asked is one which is spoken as a group, as a whole. They're speaking it as one person together. It was certainly common knowledge to them who Peter was by this group. Because it's the same questioning. You also are not one of his disciples, are you? And so it's inferring again, John was there at the fireside. And he, he was known by the, the officials. He was known by them. And yet second time, Peter again denies knowing Jesus. Before a larger group of people. How do we identify ourselves before larger groups of people? Who, do they know who we are in, in the workplace, in, out in society, in communities? When we're in a large group, are we prepared because that is even worse, isn't it? When you get a whole group of people saying, you're not a Christian, are you? And they're all, you know, oh, you want to be right, you want to be accepted, you want to be part of the group. They're all, you know, they're all with it. You want to be with them, you want to be like them. And yet they're, they're mocking Christ. It's very difficult as a Christian. I remember when I was a Christian. Still am a Christian, by the way. <laughs> I remember early on in my Christian life, and I worked for a company called Ring Lighting, and it was a Christmas works party, and we went out for a Chinese meal, and don't get me wrong, I always talked about Jesus to them at work and everything, I got a good ribbing, got a good ribbing, but I spoke about Jesus, and uh, we went out at a Christmas party, and then we went out to a club, and I was drinking excessively, I got drunk, I was telling people about Jesus. And then we went out from there, we went back to the hotel, and then we started drinking further and taking other substances. And I was telling them about Jesus. But what a hypocrite! What a hypocrite! I, 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 just, I was just like them. It was all a sham. I was denying Jesus. My words might have been speaking it, but my actions were denying Jesus. In, the, in that group situation. And you know, that can happen to all of us. And it happened to Peter here, and the third time it tells us, doesn't it, that he got that, he weeped, he was broken. He weeped, he was contract. The worst thing is that we can have a hard heart, that we can just ignore it, that we can just carry on. But if we're prepared to weep and be broken over it, this is where uh, Peter was. And I thank God that I was broken that morning. When dawn broke, and it was morning time, because I was up all night. When I got back to Danielle's home, I remember in the bedroom upstairs, the front room, on the bed, I fell on my knees, weeping. For what, how I'd just been, how I'd acted. Lord, forgive me. You know, praise God, I've never put myself in that situation ever again since. But you know, we're weak. We've got to watch ourselves, especially in groups where there's people. Here, Peter denies. It might not just be our words, but it might not be by our words of omission, the things that we don't say, the things that we don't do. Not just the things that we do. We are to be like John. Recognised as a disciple by others. Not afraid of the circumstances. Prepared to stand before others and own our Lord. Also we are to be like Jesus was. Always speaking the truth against false accusations and lies to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Jesus did say to these disciples in Matthew 10, 18, that you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. And when they deliver you over, don't be anxious about what you're to speak or what you're to say or what to say will be given to you in that hour. Well, it wasn't given to Peter in this hour because he was depending upon himself, not upon God. He was trusting in his own self. He was bound by his fears and his anxieties. He was bound in darkness. He wasn't letting Jesus be the Lord of his life. He wasn't taking up his cross. Jesus has done everything for us. He doesn't need to do anything else for us. We should give all because he gave all. Of course, Peter at this point, he didn't know. He can be forgiven. But we know that Jesus gave all. He gave his life for us. He gave his life for us. And then we have this third denial here. And this time it tells us that it's a relative. It doesn't say this in the other Gospels. But it tells us that it's a relative of Malchus. Somebody who was actually there, who saw this ear come off and Jesus put it back on. Saying, you know, didn't I see, did I not see you in the garden? Were not my eyes, are my eyes deceiving myself? You were in the garden. And yet again, Peter denies it. But this is far worse now. This is far worse at this point because of what Peter says. Look what he says. He said, I am... Did I not see you in the garden? Peter again denied it. He denies it with a curse. This is strong. He denies it with a curse. He put a curse upon himself. And with a promise. I am not one of those. He was with disgust. He invoked a curse. And you can see that in Matthew 14, 71 to 72. He invoked a curse upon himself and swears an oath that he is not a disciple and that he was not in the garden. He's out and out liar. So what we see here is a gradual fall of a believer. Falling deeper into iniquity and sin. His denial has escalated to an outright curse upon himself. And the cock grows. <clears throat> It brings deep conviction of sin here. As he weeps. As he weeps. We all backslide. Abraham lied twice about Sarah not being his wife. Jacob stole his brother's birthright. Moses was a murderer and had serious anger issues. David was an adulterer and a murderer. The family of Jesus thought he was out of his mind, gone loopy. In Numbers, Moses told the people, if they weren't prepared to deal with sin in their lives, that sin would deal with them. Be sure that your sin will find you out, he said. Numbers 32, 23. Whatever the sin is, it will have a tendency to escalate, to get bigger. And it has here in his denial, it's got bigger. He's pulled down a curse. John Calvin writes on the course of a backslider... At first the fault will not be very great. Next it becomes habitual. And at last the conscience has been laid asleep. He who has accustomed himself to despise God will think nothing unlawful. But will dare to commit the greatest wickedness. The good news of Peter and for all of us. And we all backslide. Is that Jesus is not willing to leave you there. He will come and give you opportunity to get right with him once again. After the death and resurrection of Jesus, 
Jesus appears to Peter whilst he's fishing on the shores of Galilee. And Peter sees him from a distance, a silhouette. And he sees it's the Lord. And he dives in. He leaves it all behind. He leaves his fishing. He dives in. And it's no coincidence that three times, three times, Peter, Jesus asks Peter, do you love me? Do you really, really, really love me? Then he says, feed my sheep. And Peter finally says, Lord, you know I love you. You know all things. Then we need to do and follow Jesus and do as he says. And not deny him in our lives. But we praise God that Jesus is our friend. And when he saw Peter deny him, their eyes glanced and they saw each other, I am sure. They were eyes of compassion. Eyes of mercy. Because Jesus had to die. He had to die. He had to die before we could die for him. But when he dies for us, we as human beings, as Christians, have to die to ourselves. To our own wills. Our own desires. Our own wants. And we have to submit our desires to Jesus. We have to surrender. That's the only thing we can do. And so if there are areas in our lives. You know we've allowed Jesus in. Come into my living room Jesus. It's lovely and clean in here. Come up to my bedroom. I've got a lovely coloured wall painted. It's lovely. It's nice. And come into my kitchen. Look at it. It's the latest kitchen. It's spotless, says Jesus. But what's in here, says Jesus? Oh, that's just the closet. You don't want to go in there. No. I do want to go in there. I need to go into every room of your heart. It needs to be cleaned. Everything. So may the Lord bless his word to us today. Help us, Heavenly Father, to love one another, to be like John, to carry one another's burdens, and to, Lord, to care, but also to challenge. Oh Lord, forgive us, Lord, when we are like Peter, and we have all been there, Lord. We all, again and again, and we will be again, Lord. But we thank you for your grace and your love. Help us, Lord, to stand before of us, to not deny you, Lord, in word, in action, in things of sins of commission, Lord, and omission, those things that we do do, and those things that we don't do, and we should do. Lord, help us to be brave and strong under pressure. Help us not to buckle, Lord. Help us not to be distant and stand far off. Help us to come close and in the darkness and in that dark hour that we find ourselves in, help us to know that Jesus is really close and he will help us and he will speak the truth into the situation and our lives will be a testimony, whether that is before our families <clears throat> or in our relationships, in our communities, in our workplace environment. Help us, Lord, not to deny you. Help us, Lord, to, to love you. We thank you, Lord, that you came to Peter again and you asked him three times, do you love me? <clears throat> and Lord, you come to us too and you ask us the same question, do you love me? Do you really love me? Lord, help us to search our hearts and ask ourselves that question today. Because if we really love Jesus, we will not deny him. So Lord we commit our ways to you. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go to sin.